I was flabbergasted. I, I really was in shock. I, I didn't imagine this <laughs> a million years. So I, it took a long time for it to sink in. And then after talking with Jack and realizing kind of what she wanted to explore with Agatha this time around and go a little bit deeper, I was so excited as an as an actor, as a an Agatha lover, um, I really couldn't wait. An advocate, I really couldn't wait to, to do that. It sounded like a dream. It's been so much fun to join the MCU. I've always loved Marvel and Marvel films and projects. I so to be involved in one now, I don't know. It feels like a very surreal moment. And you know, Tina is such an amazing character. He's mm. got so many layers to him, and I don't know. He's just fun to play such a mysterious part. She's definitely a witch through and through. Like I would say, everyone's a witch through and through in this show. But I see that as a positive. And that sometimes her, for a long time, she's relied on her, on her cruelty and her defensiveness and her just like, being above it all and like and her her saying she doesn't need anybody and because she just doesn't look at her past at all like she can't, she just can't do it she just wants power and more of it and more of it and more of it nothing is ever going to satisfy her and so i'd say for her redeem to redeemable quality is that she definitely has um urges of a, like surges of like a, I want to say maternal or um, like, you know, there's other urges that come in that are unexpected for someone that you would think would be so locked off. Um, pr protection energy towards this group of women, towards this teen, like definitely has like, comes out when she least expects it. I love Teen's complicatedness, his, his darkness, um, and layering that in with his like fan energy and his, his upbeat um, you know, teenageness. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's such, a, such a, striking the balance between them is really fun. I mean, a practical set is kind of what I grew up with working on you know usually like in a tiny film you just walk into literally just someone's house and then you're shooting in there and so this world was when I first entered um, through WandaVision it was like I couldn't believe that I was had got a chance to enter the MCU that way because it was so felt the same like there was not a lot of green screen not a lot of blue screen and Matt Shackman who directed it wanted there to be not a lot of um, CGI or um, so it felt very practical the magic was all the magic was used for so long ago and so um, then this happened and Jack really wanted it stripped down even more so I'd say my the, the set that impressed me the most and I think really landed at home that we were able to do this um, and the art so many artists that are involved like I just was in awe was the witches road set this is the size of a football field and completely immersive I mean the practical sets you know it, as an actor the thing you want most is be able to see the thing you're supposed to be acting yeah. in. So it I makes mean, and, 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 that much easier yeah. um, than, you know, acting to a tennis ball. And the sets themselves, they were just so incredible. The detail and, and, the, and the layering and the, I don't know, hints to what's to come in the series that were just hidden in these sets was amazing. And all the special effects, you know, the water in episode three was mm. so amazing. Like, that, that was a possibility to... to do in reality, just watching people at the top of their game, like doing their craft to the, like the best. 
uh, we were all really, I felt very, very lucky and blessed that it was this group of humans, um, especially for this witch who likes to work alone. It was a incredibly gifted, everyone more talented though, but I mean, everyone so talented, Leg legendary and superstars. And it was, uh, it, I, I felt, I think a great amount of like, I just kept pinching myself because I was, I felt so grateful to be surrounded by such talent. Cause I knew it was gonna just raise the quality of the thing as a whole. Oh, I feel like the relationships that we've made mm. together. You know, we've formed such, we've formed a coven, we've formed a bond between us all that is, I think, will last for a very, very, yeah. very long time. Me too. Um, it's like a family. It, it's, I feel very, very lucky to be a part of it. A ladder. It's like there is constant, like the trials are always there. You have to get past one rung to get to the next. Possibility of falling, mm. breaking something at every step. And when you get to the top, it's, you can't even like, if you can't even see, you lose track of what it is you're going for. And then once you get there, is it what you wanted? After all of that work. Like a, um, a labyrinth. For yes. similar reasons. Of, but no, like, but I like labyrinth better because it's more like the, twisty. Yeah, twisty and dangerous, but fun. I, well, I, I, without spoiling too much, I will say that my character is um, very powerful and mysterious and um, has a, almost like a shape-shifting quality uh, where you kind of never know what version you're going to get. Um, so I was really excited about, about the challenge of that and, and getting to kind of play a character that's playing by your own rules. I loved the um, the the practical elements of the show so much, um, and just the tangible quality of all the all the sets and all the kind of special effects. Um, and I, I yes, the the set of the Witch's Road was kind of incredible. It made me feel like we were shooting the Wizard of Oz or something. Like I felt like, oh, this must this must have been what it felt like when they were shooting the Wizard of Oz, which I I loved that. I felt the same way. Everybody um, in the cast had such a genuine, uh, just generosity and kind and good, good souls. Like I feel, it's rare to have you know such a big ensemble and have everyone you know kind of show up egoless and ready to play and laugh and um, so it was yeah. It's uh, sometimes that happens and it's just you have to appreciate it when it happens because it's really rare. Like Patty said. I mean, for me to be in a group of such talented performers uh, was really quite an honor. I, I was really pumped about that. And I was also just, uh, the scripts were so amazing and I was so excited to get to play in such a, a nuanced world. Yeah, and I was already a fan of WandaVision and also a fan of the MCU for years. And so to be able to join the MCU in this show was a literal dream come true. Well, I knew I'd be stepping into a new world, so. I didn't know what it was going to be, and I knew something. I knew that witches were involved, so uh, I I just was excited about working with new people and being in a whole different fantasy land. And I knew it would be fun. I think everyone's motivation probably was wanting to get something at the end of the road, but for Jen, I think. She was really feeling a lack of power and agency over her life, and Agatha kind of illuminated that and uh, poked at the fact that Jen has kind of given up on herself and her power. And so I think her goal was really to step out of her comfort zone and actually give this adventure a try. And I would say that Alice's objective of going down the road is to seek the truth. I think she's been told something about the road uh, that she never really believed. And now that she's being presented with the option to go it, down it herself, I think she feels like she has to, uh, she has to know whether this thing that's sort of 
haunted her her whole life is real or not. And I think Sharon just kind of really wanted to go to a party. <laughs> you know. I mean, the Witches Road set yeah. was so incredible. It was so cool that they built an actual forest for us to walk through in many different yeah. ways. And it was so epic. I it mean, was it, so epic. Yeah, it felt expansive, mm -hmm. but also so detailed. There's the, every leaf is painted, and um, there's different kinds of mushrooms that with different sizes and patterns. And, and trees, yeah. like really, like spooky trees. And I think I was most impressed about how much they were able to change it. Yeah. Like they would move a tree and now we're on a different part of the road or they would yeah. move a rock and it would just they would make it feel so big even though we could see the end of it. Mm -hmm. Like we, in the room you knew how big it was but on screen you would just have no idea. Yeah. Magic. Mysterious. <sighs> Unpredictable. I had no idea that it was going to have a song in it. And then when I found out it was Bobby and Kristen Lopez, I was really excited because I've always wanted to sing one of their songs because I think they're geniuses. And then to be able to, at that point, I think we had been working for a while, the coven. And so it was exciting just to get to sing with the girls and the guy that I, have fall, I had fallen in love with. So it was very exciting. It was very exciting. The, the Witch's Road was so big we couldn't, film at the studio where we were filming everything else, Trillith, we had to go to a different studio because it had a larger sound stage. And I think when, well, I can only speak for myself, when I walked onto the set, I started to cry. Um, it, it was stunning in its m majesty. I mean, I don't even know how to describe this except it, it just elevated my acting because I, of the environment I was in. It, and the artistry, the craftsmanship. And I understand that the production designer gave each of his crew a tree to design individually. And so we were constantly surprised as we walked the Witch's Road, as what we were seeing. And I mean, the, the production value in this is extraordinary. Everybody was at the top of their game. And I was continually blown away by the visual that I'm now asked to act in, to live in. It just made me a better actor. Uh, you know, you never know um, how you're going to um, live with, communicate with, accept, whatever, actors when you meet them on a, a film set. This was so unique because we're all different. We all complement each other. And as I said earlier, you know, Jack created a, an equal environment, equal and supportive and loving environment, um, so that it was very easy to act with everybody, extremely easy to act with everybody, individually as, or as a, you know, if we had scenes, collective scenes, there was respect, enormous respect. And um, I hope that I have this kind of experience for what remains of my career, because this was a high mark. This was a very high mark. Mm. I think I think the most exciting part of, of being able to do Agatha along was the opportunity to work with Katherine Hahn again, um, both because I love her personally, but because her sense of Agatha is, is so enormous. There's so much there in her mind, body, spirit, you know, and, and, you know, it, it is my job to come up with the story, but it's fueled by, it was fueled by my understanding of, of, of what she's capable of, what interests her, um, and, and what, you know, what I know, what I knew that audience would, audiences would enjoy seeing her do on screen. We did an enormous amount of research on witches. Like that was really a lot of the early days in the room. Um, it's a little bit of like <laughs> vamping as you're trying to figure out the story. Um, I am not one for research myself personally. I don't actually like that. So, so the way I sort of organized it was I have this fabulous team of writers and I, I gave them assignments. So they would come in and do presentations on potions, um, on um, you know, herbology, on, on um, divination. Um, and some of them, you know, the reason that I hired them, they already had passionate connections to various forms of witchcraft. Um, so you know,
know, there was that, and then and then we spoke to a witch, um, which was you know really impactful. Um, and uh, and then you know we were sort of devouring witchy content. We had crystals in the room. We lit candles and got in trouble. Um, on the very first day of the room, uh, we cast a spell. Um, we were we were actually remote, and so I had my lovely assistant deliver spell kits to each of the writers. Um, home and we lit candles together and and um, did a spell um, that was called the road opener spell. I think that you know there's a there is so much there with Agatha Harkness. You know that like that's really the challenge of making any series is do you have enough? Um, I come from the feature space and so like with a feature you have I mean depending on who you're making the feature for you're making an hour and a half movie or a three hour movie depending. Um, but like, you know, it, it is more uh, finite, obviously. Um, and, and with um, TV, you, you need so much more, there is so much more surface area. Um, and with Agatha, because she is a liar and a performer and she wears so many masks, to me, like, it's sort of like, it, it feels infinite because like, anytime you peel back a layer, there's gonna be another layer of, of lies and performance underneath it. And that that's really sort of the journey of the show is peeling back those layers. Um, so The Witch's Road, I th it's, ha it's hard to remember the exact moments that, the moment where that kind of clicked. We. You know, we had the idea that that you know I really wanted to put Agatha in a situation where um, she was forced to assemble a coven. Like that seemed really like a, a terrific um, opportunity for both comedy and drama because it's just all conflict all the time. And also, it had very sort of heisty vibes, and I, I that seemed right for her because she's a con artist. Um, the fact that they were traveling the road. Um, Again, I mean, I think we, we needed what what I like to call the container of like what what is the thing of the show, um, and you know the the Witch's Road comic is is terrific and much beloved, um, and so it was really kind of our jumping off point. It was the idea of like, well, we could take the notion of the Richard with the Witch's Road and we could you know really make it our own. Um, so the tone of the series, the way that I describe it, is is two words, and it is. Catherine Hahn. Like, that is the best way I can articulate what this show does. I mean, I think, you know, WandaVision had a real trick of a tone in in that it, you know, was a comedy, it was a sitcom, it was, it was broad, it was, um, but it was very heartfelt, moments of big drama, moments of big tragedy. Um, and I, I very much wanted to carry that particular tone on into Agatha all along. But we have this added piece of um, of horror and sort of like, I don't know, like teeth that we didn't have in WandaVision. Um, and there's a darkness and, and that, that is all, it all sort of stems from, from, um, from Agatha, the character herself. And, and because Catherine is able to do all of these lev levels, like she's really the way to conceive of what this show is. You know, so so one of the questions in in creating the show was, you know, how serious is it going to be? How far are we going to take things? Um, and and something that I I think was even surprising to to us, you know, to um, to to the writers um, was, you know, what are the stakes? You know, like it, initially, I think you know the risks were a little softer because you know we're making a comedy and it should be fun but as we really got into the witchcraft and the lore of it we realized um that the stakes needed to be real and that we needed to put them in real peril and that and that really dovetails with the the practical element of the show you know the the fact that there's like a um very uh, a, like a visceral threats that are grounded in nature, that these are witches, um, you know, who are centuries old, but the threats are the same, you know, the threat of drowning, the threat of being burned, the threat, um, you know, of being buried alive, of being stoned. Like this is, um, these were our tools and, and, and we take them really seriously. Um, so yeah, the trials um, are s sort of how we um, structure the ep the episodes um, for kind of the midsection of the show. Um, and with WandaVision, there was um, there was kind of like a cleaner line of how each episode functioned inside of like one type of um, one one specific era of sitcoms. Um, in this 
in this show, the, the trials were our device, um, but there, there were, it was more than just one influence. You know, there was the burden of, you know, each trial was assigned to a distinct witch. So it was about her history and her arc and her particular growth. Um, but then we tried very hard to tie that to something that was um, either directly or indirectly witchy. You know, in the case of Jen, you know, she's in the sort of Nancy Myers, you know, um, Big Little Lies um, type of space. And, um, and that's not, you don't think of witches in that space, but I do because like those are like covens of powerful, duplicitous women. Um, and, and so, you know, th that was a, seemed, especially for the first trial, it seemed like such a fun place to start, such an unexpected environment for our witches. Um, and also the idea of like the second they step in, they transform. I, I wanted the first trial to be the, the most startling transformation. Um, so to have them go from their road kits like into their, um, you know, coastal grandma chic looks seemed like the, the sort of biggest jump. Um, and then, and then, you know, all the sort of trials followed that same logic of it's tied to the witch, but how we, how do we pull in, you know, other influences to create, um, a, a, a distinct, um, discrete world. So with Agatha all along, I think what people can expect is, you know, a fun, scary ride. You know, that is how the show is pitched. That's what you see in the trailer. Um, and it has all of those thrills and delights in kind of a horror slash horror comedy space. Um, but it, you know, very much like WandaVision, you know, w it, the show is front loaded with these kinds of thrills and all the theatricality of the costumes and, and the looks and the music. Um, but, but also like WandaVision, you know, there is, there is a great deal of depth to the show and we do go to dramatic places. So um, I think, you know, what people can expect is, is a thrill ride that, you know, ultimately is very emotionally affecting. You know, Marvel has a, has a, has a great tradition of, of, of listening to the audience and seeing what characters resonate with the fandom. I mean, you can go back to the comic books and see characters like Wolverine, who appeared in Incredible Hulk, kind of lighting a fire within the fan base and growing and becoming, and becoming a, a, an X-Man and a, and, a, and a huge iconic character in his own right. And, and um, Agatha is no different. She is a side character. She was a villain in WandaVision, but Jack Schaefer's vision and the way Katherine Hahn embodied that character on screen made her an undeniable icon that we wanted to see more of in her own series. Um, you know, Jack Schaefer is one of the most remarkable filmmakers I've ever had the, had the uh, honor to work with. And uh, when she becomes inspired by something, it inspires us. Uh, you know, her 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 imagination is 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 so vast and so and so incredible that 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 her opening the door to us and letting and letting us walk down walk down that road with her uh, was a was a real privilege. And um, and her vision was so was so incredible for this character that we that we all became inspired and wanted to make the show. Uh, I would describe Agatha all along as a fun Halloween adventure story uh, for anyone that loves the Halloween season and is a fan of, of action and brave enough to maybe get a little bit of scared at times. Um, uh, but it is a, uh, it's also a surprisingly emotional story like you expect from a Jack Schaefer show. I mean, Katherine Hahn took this character and really, and really made her into an icon. And and, 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 and Jack surrounded her with, with other amazing characters and amazing actors to embody those characters in, in Agatha all along. So it's so much fun to see Agatha, who really, you know, has her own amoral way of, to look at the world, have, being challenged by all these different personality types um, with their own agendas and their own outlooks and their own codes of ethics that, that that oftentimes, you know, run contrary to our own. Uh, it's one of the greatest ensembles we've ever assembled in the MCU. Uh, these are the Avengers of Witches. And this coven, you know, the thing about the Witches Road, which, you know, which you learn over the course of the story, is that 
you can't just walk down the witch's road with any with any old coven. I mean, these these are you, you, you have to be a well trained, well oiled machine where everybody can predict each other's movements like a like a SEAL Team Six, you know, going down the witch's road. And that's not the case with this coven. You know, they are assembled very quickly. They don't get along. They don't like each other. They don't know each other. They are not prepared at all for the challenges that await them. And that that really brings about a lot of incredible drama and comedy along the along the along the journey. Uh, well, you know, we 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 use no green screen on this show. This is a show that that embraced practical effects, practical magic, and it was really important to Jack to do this because she was trying to conjure an emotion. Um, you know, that we, that we perhaps hadn't felt on screen for, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, uh, you know, this, this, this realistic, tactile, dark fantasy feeling of the movies of the, of the, of the 70s and 80s and the, and, the, and the techniques that they used back then to create larger-than-life effects. Um, the, the, the music is, is, is crucial to the series. And it's, and it's crucial not just because you know, we were inspired by the Agatha All Along song from WandaVision, and, and we were so excited that the Lopez's came back to write a new song for us. But also, the song itself is, is, is key to the, to the journey of the story. It's a spell. It has a function. It has different meanings. It has different meanings for each character. And as, as the show unfurls and you, and you learn the, the, the deeper messaging of this song in in how it informs the story and informs these character journeys, it takes on a, a, a much deeper emotional resonance than, than you know, just a theme song would. I think that they, they, they should expect a fun adventure story, uh, a lot of surprises, um, a, a lot of thrills, a lot of laughs, um, and, 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 some, and, some, um, and some real, and some real emotional heft. The heft that only Jack Schaefer could bring to the screen.